How much is personal income tax in Canada? 25%? 30%, 50%? Canada has what's called a progressive or also called graduated tax system, which in simple terms means that the more you earn, the more taxes you will pay. Let's just go on and talk about how you can calculate your personal income taxes. This explanation is just very general. And even if you use tax calculators, they will only be able to provide you with an estimate and not the exact number because the ultimate taxes that you need to pay will depend on a number of other factors. But a very basic calculation to calculate how much taxes you need to pay is the federal income taxes you need to pay plus the provincial taxes that apply depending on the province you live in. Canadian taxpayers pay income tax not only to the federal government but also to the government of the province or territory where they reside, also known as provincial taxes. So this is not the whole picture yet because there is something called basic personal amounts which are not taxed but I will get get to that in a moment. So how much are these federal income taxes? Let's look at this table here. So this table shows the progressive tax rates for federal income tax. And here you can see that on the first $53,359, the tax rate of 15% will apply. Then on the next $53,358, a tax rate of 20.5% will apply. So let's say your income is $90,000. So at the first glance, it seems as though $90,000 would fall into this bracket and therefore 20.5% will apply. But that is wrong. So you do not multiply 20.5% times $90,000. But instead, you first take your first $53,359 multiply that by 15% and then you take the residual the residual would be $90,000 minus 53359 36, so the $36,641 would fall into the next tax bracket and only on this amount will the next tax rate which is 20.5% apply to so this number times 20.5% there you go and so on. On the next $58,713, 26% will apply. Then on the next $70,245, 29%. And on the portion over $235,675, 33% will apply. Let's just look at the example here on this page. Let's say your income is $235,675. You will be taxed based on several tax rates for your 2023 federal income tax. And the math is listed down below here. So on the first 53,359, 15% will apply, which equals $8,000. On the second tax bracket, 53,359 times 20.5% equals 10,938.39. Uh, and then you go on to the third tax bracket. So the third tax bracket covers the next $58,713 and you multiply that times uh, 26% equals $15,265 and so on. You do the same with the fourth tax bracket and when you add everything together, then the total is $54,578.67. I hope that clarified a bit. So even though the top federal tax bracket is 33%, the 33% will not be applied to your entire income, but only on the portion over this amount of 235,675. And now let's also look at the provincial income tax rates. Your provincial tax rate is determined by the province you are living in on December 31st of the tax year. For example, if you move from Manitoba to Ontario in July and you find yourself living in Ontario on December 31st, you would fall under the Ontario provincial tax rates. So let's look at the province of Ontario, where Toronto is and where I am living in. So here are the income tax brackets that apply in Ontario for the year 2023. And the same calculation applies here as for the federal taxes. But the difference are in the brackets, the size of the brackets, as well as the tax rate. 
So it gets a bit complicated here. And if you want a more accurate calculation, you might want to do that in Excel. Or in a moment, I will show you a tax simulator or calculator, which you can use to estimate your taxes. So for provincial income taxes in 2023 in Ontario, on the first $49,231, a tax rate of 5.05% will apply. So let's just briefly go back to the federal tax bracket. So the first federal tax bracket is 53,359 and the first provincial tax bracket in Ontario is $49,231. So just for simplicity's sake, let's just say the first tax bracket is $50,000. So this would mean that on a federal level, you would need to pay 15% while on a provincial level, you would need to pay 5%, so about 20%. Now let's move on. What do the other tax brackets look like? On the next amount of $49,232, you would need to pay a tax rate of 9.15%. On the next $51,537, 11.16%. On the next $70,000, 12.16%. On the portion over $220,000, 13.16%. Now, here's one very important thing that we have not talked about, which is taxable income. So what is your taxable income? For that, let's just very briefly go back to the table, which has the federal income tax rates. So here, as I said earlier, 15% will apply to the first $53,359 of your income of your taxable income. If you earn $60,000, for example, does that mean that $60,000 is your taxable income, meaning do taxes apply on that whole $60,000? Not necessarily. So these taxes, these different tax rates will apply on your taxable income. So what is your taxable income? Here it says that your taxable income is the amount used for determining how much federal and provincial income taxes you will need to pay by determining which tax brackets your income falls into. All good, but now what actually counts as taxable income? You can calculate your taxable income first by counting up all of the income you received from all sources throughout the year from January 1st to December 31st. So what does your taxable income include? This includes but is not limited to one wages and salaries then there's also tips and gratuities and casual earnings not reported on a t4 slip then there's net rental property income so if you have a spare room and you rent that out then yes that counts as taxable income rsp income net self-employment income net capital gains income for example if you invest uh, in a stock and you sell that stock and you make a profit then uh, those are capital gains dividends investments and interest income income and others. So to get to your taxable income, you basically add up all the components that I mentioned just now. But keep in mind that there is also a way that you can reduce your taxable income. So let's say that after you added up all the components of your taxable income, you get to a number of $60,000. There is a way to actually reduce your taxable income. Here on TurboTax again, how do you reduce tax owed in a legal way? Two common ways of reducing your taxes owing and or improving your tax refund are credits and deductions. And that brings me to the basic personal amount or BPA that I talked about earlier. So a BPA, a basic personal amount, is a non-refundable tax credit that all Canadians are entitled to. The federal BPA is $15,000 for the 2023 taxation year. So in other words, basic personal amounts are the allowable amount of income that you can earn before you must start paying taxes. For the 2023 tax year, the Ontario basic personal amount is $11,865. Um, so of course, it will differ from province to province, while the federal BPA is $15,000. So you will need to take that into consideration when you calculate your taxes. And this is a really great thing, guys, because it basically means that you will not need to pay federal taxes on the first $15,000 that you earn, and you will not need to pay any provincial taxes in Ontario on the first $11,865 earned. Now, going back to how to reduce tax owed, how else can you reduce 
your taxable income. Another way you can do this is through tax deductions. Tax deductions, amounts and expenses you subtract from your income, making your taxable income lower, which reduces how much of your income is subject to taxes. An example would be RRSB contributions. So RRSB, in case you are not familiar with this, is a registered retirement savings plan. It's an account that is registered with the government. It is not an investment product per se, but you can imagine an RSB as, as well as other registered savings plan as sort of a pot to which certain tax benefits and rules apply. In this case, for the RSB, whenever you contribute money towards your RSB from your income, so let's say your income is $60,000 and you contribute $10,000 towards your RSB, that $10,000 you contribute is not taxed and with that it reduces your taxable income i'm not going to go into more details about the rsp here if you are curious to find out more then you can watch this video up here where i specifically explain about rsp and its benefits and then there are also some other tax credits or deductions you might be eligible to claim which i will not go into in this video we will get to a numbers example in a moment but before that let us get to the last point which is deductions because ultimately you don't just want to know how much in taxes you need to pay but you want to know how much of your paycheck you have left at the end of the day and yes unfortunately fortunately taxes is not all there is in canada there's also this thing called cpp and ei which are deductions that will reduce your income so what is CPP? What is EI? And what is deduction? First of all, what is CPP? CPP is the Canada Pension Plan. The CPP is a mandatory public pension plan in Canada that provides basic financial support to retired, disabled or deceased workers and their family. It is funded through contributions from both employees and employers as well as self-employed individuals. So a CPP is sort of a benefit, but first of all, you will need to contribute to it. So how much do you need to contribute to the CPP? In 2023, and keep in mind that this may change from year to year, there's an employee and employer contribution which is the same percentage of 5.95%. So in addition to all those taxes that you need to pay, you also need to pay 5.95% in CPP. So I'm not going to go into further details and also not into how to calculate these contributions because to be frank, I am not an expert in this. For the purpose of roughly understanding how taxes here in Canada work, it's sufficient to know that there's this thing called CPP and it's 5.95% this year. Now next, let's talk about EI. What is EI? EI stands for Employment Insurance. EI or Employment Insurance is a program in Canada that provides temporary financial assistance to eligible individuals who have lost their jobs and are actively seeking employment. It is a federal program that is administered by the government of Canada. So employment assurance is a benefit for Canadians. There are, of course, requirements to be eligible for it. Again, I will not go into the details, but what's important, we want to know how much you need to contribute. And again, this may change from year to year, but let's look at the year 2023. The EI employment insurance maximum contribution 2023 rate will be $1.63 per $100 for employees. In other words, 1.63%. And by the way, your employer will also contribute to EI but the percentage is different. So now there you have it, there's a CPP and EI which are further deductions from your income. Now let's get to the really exciting part. I know you're waiting for this. Let's look at a number example. I'm going to switch to another website, Wealth Simple's website, which is an investment platform. And by the way, guys, I've been using Wealth Simple for two to three years now to do my investing. Uh, it's all online. It's very, very easy to use. It's very intuitive and I love the interface. So in case you're new here in Canada and you are looking for an investment platform, then you could go and check out Wealth Simple. And just in case you want to sign up, you can use my referral link in the descriptions down below. And just a disclaimer up front, if you sign up and fund the account, then I may be eligible for a small commission of $10 to $25. It tends to change at the moment. It is $25, I think. And the great news is that you, once you fund the account, will also get a bonus of $10 to $25. Now let's go back to the tax calculator. So keep in mind, this is just an estimation, but it gives you an idea of what to expect. Now let's choose a province or territory. I will choose Ontario again and let's just say that your employment income is $60,000 and for self-employment income I will just assume there is none 
and RSP and FHSA deduction. So I explained RSP earlier. Anything that you contribute to your RSP is not subject to tax. Let's just say that this year you put $2,500 into your RSP. Let's say you don't have any capital gains or dividends and no other income. So how much in taxes would you need to pay? Here are the results. Total income 60,000. Here are your tax savings because you contributed $2,500 to the RSP. So see, it makes a huge difference. It is really worth contributing to your RSP because it will save you a lot of money in taxes. So the total tax that you will need to pay as an estimate is $13,000.57, which consists of federal tax of $5,700, uh, provincial tax of $3,001, and CPP and EI premiums, so the Canada Pension Plan and Employment Insurance we talked about just now, $4,340. I know, it's a lot, right? So your after income tax, so $60,000 minus $13,057 is $46,943. So in summary, if you make $60,000 a year living in Ontario, you will be taxed $13,057. That means your net pay will be $46,943 per year or $3,912 per month. Your average tax rate is 21.76%. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and that this was useful. In case you're a tax expert or a specialist watching this, then feel free to contribute in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next video. Bye.